Grab a plastic bin from Walmart for this project. I'm going to start by drilling a few holes into the side of the bin. This is going to be for handles down the road. Then I'm going to flip the bin over and I'm going to drill four holes, one in each corner of the plastic bin. I want to dress this bin up so I picked up some gray and white patterned fabric and I've cut it down to size so that it is the right height of the bin. Now I'm going to use some spray adhesive to adhere the fabric to the plastic. When I get to the corners, I am going to cut up the side and then I can just fold these two pieces over each other, creating a really nice looking seam. To add the handles, I'm going to locate the hole that I drilled with my finger and then just poke through the fabric with a pair of scissors. Now I can thread the jute through and tie a knot on the inside to secure it in place. Now I'm gonna add some feet to the bottom to raise this up off the ground and just make it look a little nicer. And there you have it. I have a really nice looking bin that I can keep out in the open. It looks so much better than your basic plastic bin and I can store all kinds of stuff in here. Let's create an anthropology dupe. So I'm gonna grab a couple different styles of this pretty paper and I'm gonna cut it into four inch squares. Now I'm gonna paint a thin coat of Mod Podge onto a white ceramic tile. Now I'm gonna press these two together, seal them in really good, get any bubbles out. Now I'm gonna come back and add a top coat of Mod Podge. I'm gonna repeat this with about 35 tiles. I cut a piece of plywood to size and I'm gonna paint the top using a white chalk paint. Now I'm gonna place a full length mirror right in the middle. Now to attach the mirror to the wood, I'm using Gorilla Glue. Once I've got the mirror down, I'm adding this board and some weight, and I'm gonna let this set for 24 hours. Now I'm gonna dry fit the tiles into a pattern around the mirror. For the corners, where I have a little bit of a smaller space, I'm actually just gonna use a square of paper. So the first thing I'm doing is adding a little bit of water to the wood with a paintbrush. Now for the tiles, I'm using Gorilla Glue again, and then the two are pressed together. And I'm gonna let the whole thing set for 24 hours. Now I have a stunning full length tile mirror that looks like something from anthropology. Let's run on down to Walmart and it's time to grab your favorite inexpensive bucket. We got to get those handles off. Next we're going to take that bucket and flip it over. We need to set in two strips of wood that are going to fit right on the edge. Next stick them on there. Make sure they fit. Then you can use some hot glue. Just flip it over and press it against the plastic. So do that to both pieces right on the edge and just hold it down till it sets. Next, flip the bucket over, and what you're gonna do is grab just some small little screws. So just take your drill and put it right in. Two or three in each strip of wood will be just right, and that's gonna hold it in place. Now it's time to put on the wheels, and we're gonna mark it one inch from each side of the wood. We're gonna put four of these legs on, and we're gonna drill it. Now it's time to take that hot glue, put it right on the edge of the hole there, and put the leg on. Look at this, they are Excellent. Now it's time to go ahead and decorate the bucket. Just take again our favorite hot glue, put it right on the edge, just stick it right on there. Just go ahead and set it all the way around and we're going to go around the whole bucket. Once you get that on, it's time to take a little bit of your inexpensive fabric, cut about 12 inches wide. We're going to use that hot glue again and we're going to fold over the edge. What we're going to do is fold it over the bucket. It's going to cover all that plastic. Get that glue right on that last bit of rope right there. We're going to take this all the way around the bucket and look at this. This is going to be a great container. It turned out great. I hoped you loved this DIY rolling basket. Today's project starts with a few end tables that you can pick up from your local Walmart or Ikea, and they're simple to put together. Put a wheel on the bottom to make this table mobile. Get a nut that will fit on the end of those threads, and we've got to glue it to the bottom of the leg. But we want to make sure we add a washer to give it some strength, is we're going to use a two-part epoxy. We're going to take the epoxy and put it around the edge of the bolt next to the washer. And on the bottom of our table, turn it on its side, and we've got to glue a piece of strip of wood on the bottom. Go ahead and just put some around the hole on the bottom of the leg and we're going to take that little invention we did with the washer and the nut and stick it right on there. Make sure it gets nice and secure. That allows us now to screw the wheel into the bottom of the leg. Got to join these two tables together. Once you get it all on there on all four corners, go ahead and stick the other table right on top. Once it dries up in about 20 minutes, it's super strong and it's time to paint it. Went ahead and put these three boards in for the base and they sit there really nice. It also gives some strength but it's time to finish the top. I want to use some contact paper. Look at that beautiful DIY kitchen island. It just turned out great. And the best part about it is it can be wheeled around. 
So I'm starting by cutting two inch strips of fabric. I'm gonna fold a strip in half and just use an iron to create a seam so that they stay folded together. I'm gonna use some quick dry fabric glue to attach this trim right over the existing blue trim. Once that dries, I'm gonna flip this over and add glue to the backside as well. And I'm just gonna push those metal hooks through the holes in the beach mat. Project was inspired by Home Talk creator, So Bright Creations. Grab some hot glue and put a bead of glue along one side of your lampshade and then add some twine or jute. And we're gonna wrap that around the lampshade until we cover the entire thing. After you have all your tassels made, we are gonna add these to the bottom of our lampshade. And I decided to hot glue these. You could use a needle and thread and tie them and sew them on the edge, but this worked out perfect. You are going to simply trim off the excess tails. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that this is from a Walmart lampshade. Literally looks like I got it from Anthropology. I ran to my local Walmart and grabbed two matching pots, one bigger than the other. First thing I did was level an area in the front that would be in direct sunlight and put the bigger pot in first. Next, I grabbed an old bucket upside down into the bigger pot. To make sure that it's centered. Next, I grabbed a flower pot base. I wanted to make sure that I turned it with the lip side down. We're gonna take the smaller pot that we got and place it on the center of that pot. I wanna grab some local rocks and place them around the edge. Next, I got out a new solar powered fountain that I bought for $10. It floats in the water because it's got a float on the bottom and it works great in direct sunlight. With this fountain comes some plastic spacers. What this does is make sure that the fountain stays in the center of the pot. Once you got it marked, you can go ahead and just trim it with a pair of scissors. Put some nice clear water inside. Go ahead and place the fountain inside. Once the direct sunlight hits it, voila, you've got a water fountain. The most amazing thing about this is it's solar powered. So you can place it anywhere in your yard that it gets direct sunlight. Get a styrofoam cooler. I found mine at Walmart. Take a piece of cardboard, trace with a Sharpie, and cut with an X-Acto blade to make it slightly smaller than the lid of the cooler. Take a piece of upholstery foam and trace with a Sharpie and cut with an X-Acto blade. Hot glue the upholstery foam to the top of the lid with the cardboard on top of that. Take a blanket, rug or textile of your choice and cut it to size to the top of the lid. Fold and hot glue to the lid and trim the excess. Use an old sheet, cut to size, and wrap around the cooler base. Hot glue all the way around the base of the cooler and trim off the excess. Cut the remainder of the blanket, fold over, and hot glue the edges to clean them up. Wrap the blanket pieces around the base with hot glue. Add tassels from the blanket around the top of the base of the cooler to give it a boho look. There you have it, a cheap way to create your own boho DIY storage ottoman for your home for less than $15. I went to the store and grabbed some hula hoops along with black matte spray paint. I took the hoops out to my garden and decided to attach them to my house using small poultry staples. I then slipped a piece of pipe cleaner through the hole and attached the hoop, twisting the ends together. I used black electrical tape to join the hoops together. To attach the plant, I carefully moved each stem, bundling some together and following the curve of the hoop. I love the look of my new trellis and it was so easy to make. And as the plant grows, I can simply add additional hoops. 